Hello and welcome to Please Don't Send Me Into Outer Space, the podcast intent on exploring all that science fiction and fantasy has to offer one movie at a time. My name is Joel. My name is Sarah. I'm Mia. The movie this week is All Dogs Go to Heaven from 1989, directed by Don Bluth, Gary Goldman, and Dan Kunster. Starring Dom DeLuise, that's it. Oh, Burt Reynolds, Judith Barcy, Charles Nelson Riley, Vic Tabak, and a whole bunch of other people that probably knew Burt Reynolds. Bonnie Anderson, <laughs> Ken Page. Do you know these people? No, I oh. don't. <laughs> so uh, let's let's. Uh, even though you didn't technically pick this movie, Mia, let's pretend you you <laughs> picked this movie. Why do you like All Dogs Go to Heaven? Um, I really like I really like Burt Reynolds. Actually, he's really, he's I like his voice acting a lot, and Dom DeLuise. <sighs> Maybe it's just nostalgic. I'm wa- I'm watching it now, and I think some parts don't really flow as well as I thought they did back then. But I still like it. I was under the impression that you watch this every day. <laughs> well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you're not wrong. And, yeah. And how familiar are you with it, Sarah? Oh, this was my first time seeing it all the way through. I probably had watched the beginning once or twice, and I think at some point I just, as a kid, was like, I don't think this is my cup of tea, (laughs) but that was just me. I think that it has total appeal for kids. Like, I do. I understand why other kids would have really liked it, watching it growing up. Sure. You're going to have to explain that to me. (laughs) <laughs> this wasn't a Joel movie. This was a Robin movie. Who's my younger sister? So I mean, that doesn't mean I didn't see it a hundred times. But uh, you know, it's the one we had on VHS. It wasn't wasn't the close to my heart. You know, Disney movies before that. There was just a couple of movies that we cycled through because we had VHS copies of it. This movie, My Neighbor Totoro, uh, The Brave Little Toaster. Um, uh, Philo Goes West, but not an American tale for some reason. But the, yeah. Oh, I think, I can't, I, I definitely saw The Land Before Time, but I don't think that was one of the ones that we watched a lot, probably because that's like right out of the bat sad. The <laughs> Land Before Time. It also has the young girl's voice as a Ducky. pterodactyl. Ducky. Mm-hmm. She wasn't a pterodactyl, was she? No. What? I don't think she was. was oh, she? no, I'm thinking of Petrie. Yeah, that was Petrie. You're right. Ducky's a, like a patasaurus or whatever. She's the one in the water. Mm-hmm. You know? It's sad, because on, on her grave it says, yep, yep, and that's what she said in the movie. On Ducky's grave? <laughs> on um, Judith Barcy's. Yes, that's terrible. That's terrible. See, this listener, if you want to get real sad... You should look up this actress who who did voices in Don Bluth movies, and she was in a bunch of commercials because she had a very short, tragic life, and uh, that that just adds a, a whole new paint, of, a coat of paint to All Dogs Go to Heaven. Maybe you shouldn't look into it. Never mind. <laughs> just enjoy the movie. <laughs> I was expecting not to like this because it's got some. Stuff that I wouldn't think was appropriate for children. Drinking, gambling, puppies. You've been saying you don't like this movie for quite a long time. Yeah. (laughs) Did you like it better on revisiting it? Yeah, I enjoyed it watching it right now. (laughs) Except for that one part. Yeah, 
that or the girl dies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're <laughs> I gotta cut that out. Uh, <laughs> no, the part with the alligator. Still don't like that. Aw, King King whatever it was a good song. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, the song's fine. As I'm saying, or like I was saying, the song is just fine, and I enjoy. I even enjoy the the colors of the scene and stuff like that. But it doesn't. Like, where did it come from? It was to come back later because he eats Carface or whatever. I mean, that could have been Itchy. Itchy could have come back. You know, he had all those dogs running towards it. What if like a huge amount of dogs had come in and like caused a havoc? They were just like. Carface needed to die. <laughs> we have we have Oogie Boogie on call, so get him in the studio. When did the Nightmare Before Christmas come out? Because it came out after, right? Yeah, probably like at okay. least eight years, six or eight years. I think it was nineteen ninety five. I don't know. No, nope, I... it was ninety three. Okay, so four years after this. Oh. This feels like it could have been the 80s to me, watching this movie, but it is early 90s. Yeah, I had a couple of ideas while I was watching it that it struck me as the kind of movie that is like other Don Bluth movies. Like, I I saw American Tale and Land Before Time like eight times each in the movie theater. My um, parents were divorced And when my dad would take me out, he would literally take me to do anything I wanted to do because um, he wanted to have really good time with me while we hung out. This was, like, before I was 10. Um, And then, yeah, when they came out in the theaters, I just watched those ones over and over again. And uh, really, that's on my dad because he could have said no. (laughs) But I guess I just wanted to see those movies. Um, But uh, this one, I feel like there were some similarities. But um, there's this other thing going on in this movie that's like an old-timey movie. Because they're saying it's set long ago. And it has this like moral fiber running through it the way that some old movies used to have. Like, like in the 40s, there'd be movies about people who were criminals, and they were, like, learning about, like, through maybe a nice character that's introduced in the storyline, a girl, or whatever. They're like, oh, maybe I should change my ways, or something like that. It kind of reminded me of some movies like that. Sure. Just a couple of grifters, and then a young, (laughs) innocent child comes along, and now we're going to teach her the grift. Like, uh, Paper Moon, right? Did you see that one? I don't know if I did. That's, uh, I mean, that's the same story. The, a traveling Bible salesman goes through town, but he's really just ripping people off. Mm-hmm. And then he, he picks up a young girl who claims to be his daughter and takes her on the road. And they start grifting together. The throwback style. 1939, mm-hmm. right? I wonder why they picked that particular year. <laughs> Because other than the vehicles, I can't really say I was like, oh, this is obviously you know, World War II is going on in Europe right now or whatever. I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe it was Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. Like, maybe they just felt like, oh, we've always belonged in the, that time period. We should have been on stage, you know, making jokes together. Oh, yeah, because they do kind of a vaudeville thing. Or- Oh yeah, definitely in the show, <laughs> in the uh, in the dog show. I think maybe part of the design of the movie artistically, like from like the drawings and stuff, they had like a specific setting that it was like part junkyard, part bayou, part like New Orleans, like French colonial like stuff. But there was also, like, a sparseness, and I think that that might be part of the reason that they could create it as if they said it was long ago, too. And this, like, underworld with, like, the bedding and the races and the... I don't know. Maybe maybe they had more, like, speakeasy-type stuff back then. I, I think it was... I don't, I don't think it's, like, a prohibition type of vibe, <laughs> but I think it's, like... 
there's like an underbelly of society that they're kind of like talking about. <laughs> it's the big easy, right? Gambling, yep. drinking, puppies. Oh, yeah. That's what I think of when I think of the big easy. <laughs> Mardi Gras. Nolan. Maybe they're making it like a gangster movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, there's one gangster. There's two gangsters. Oh, see, yeah, man. Okay, so Carface. I didn't. I never got that joke as a kid because I was a kid and I didn't know what a Scarface was. Mm-hmm. But now I'm an adult and I get the reference. Uh, but his his partner, who's, who's a total creep killer, right? With his his uh, his bulbous nose on that little like fat body and then the skinny head thing. Boys, boys, <laughs> you want? I should get the pliers. Like at the end <laughs> at the movie, he's like basically. It seems like they're trying to redeem him <laughs> as a character. Like he was good. Well, he got out of the boat and he's actually pushing Anne Marie back to the safety of the shore. <laughs> Turns out, Killer was a good dog after all. <laughs> just he just had violent. De- yeah, it was just about whoever he was around, right? Right. Yeah, it's kind of weird because. There's a lot of characters doing bad stuff, like the two main dogs. There was more than one time where I was like, they're not being nice. (laughs) Like, they're, like, stealing from people, and they told her they were going to try to help her out. They're not helping her out. (laughs) Like, I don't know. I guess I I think that, I think dogs in real life are nicer than this. (laughs) You You saying you never met a grifter dog? They've given us the motivation of, like, a criminal man and put it inside of a dog. (laughs) I mean, he's nice at the end. (laughs) Yeah. He has to go through a transfer. He has to go through, you know, Mm -hmm. character change. Character change. (laughs) Right. He's trying to... I mean, when he steals Anne-Marie from Carface, who's keeping her as a, a pet, Basically, because she can, she's magic and can talk to animals. Even though this is a world where animals talk, not everyone, not species, cannot talk in between. Right? The dogs can't talk to the rats, can't <laughs> talk to the horses, but Amory can talk to everybody. There is one scene where the horses are talking to each other <laughs> on the racetrack. Uh, it could all be the girl's imagination. Because she can hear animals talking. This whole movie. Yeah. (laughs) Because then the dogs would be talking to each other and it would make sense. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's definitely a fantasy movie upon a fantasy movie. (laughs) They've got um, heaven, hell, (laughs) ghosts, um, talking animals, laser guns. Satan. Yeah. They've got... Jungle tribe mice that oh, worship yeah. an alligator god. By the way, what was that part about? <laughs> Sorry, I gotta go back to it. <laughs> How could you expect me to eat such a marvelous <laughs> voice? Uh. <laughs> yeah, so I basically just wanted to do this episode so I could have my actors real. <laughs> I like how he asks the Charlie, he's like, is that a baritone or a tenor? And like when I was little, I'm like, what does that mean? And now like that I've done music school and stuff, I'm like, oh. Because <laughs> he's saying for him. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of things I didn't understand, obviously, when I was a kid. Like, like I still, lyrics in songs nowadays, I usually can't understand what people are saying. Just, uh, I think I have a problem separating music notes from like words that people are saying and my brain won't communicate or or translate them that way. Uh, now, you know, since I'd already been familiar with the music, I was like, oh, now I know all the words here. And I'm trying to think of something specific that I was like, I didn't know what that meant before, but now I'm trying to blank. I think I had more trouble understanding what Carface was saying because he's, ah, mm, ah, you know, he's got all those different volumes and he's not, everything he's saying is not necessarily coherent. It's kind of just like reactionary. Mm-hmm. So, but, but there are a lot, this movie has so many like asides too, like 
because Bert and, and Dom were probably just riffing on each other, like, hey, ooh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> no. not that that's a problem. It comes, it does come off as charming. I'm going to tell you, I did not see Burt Reynolds as being a guy that wanted to do kids' movies if I would have thought of what I think of him in my mind. And I wouldn't have thought of him as a guy who would have been palling around with Dom DeLuise back in the day either. But um, not because, for any particular reason, I just kind of thought that he was a guy that was always trying to be like a tough badass. And, like, that was too cool for, like, some people. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the image I have of him and it's false, but... Um, that might have been why he was good for the role, because that was... <laughs> yeah. That was the dog. Yeah. That's true. Well, we gotta watch Cannonball Run and Cannonball Run 2, and then you'll see <laughs> that he's a comedy genius with his partner. He was pretty good with Sally Field. <laughs> yeah, so he was being funny in that movie, right? He was, he was like, hey, I'm a charming guy. Huh? So my sister liked this movie, but my sister also liked Oliver and Company. Yeah. So I used to get this movie and Oliver and Company confused <laughs> because they were dogs that would sing and talk and stuff. And steal. And yeah, and they're riffraff or whatever, like <laughs> street dogs. So I, yeah, I think whenever I thought about All Dogs Go to Heaven, I would just think like Billy Joel songs. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only know one song from Oliver and Company, and it's probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was an actual hit. Why should I worry? Exactly. That's the only song Why I should know. I care? Like, uh, that, uh, we definitely watched that when I was a kid. I don't remember anything about it. Except the dog wears sunglasses. <laughs> I had sausage links. Yeah. I love a story with food in it. It's supposed to be Oliver, right? But with dogs. And right. Pets. Oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's and company. Get it? And this is supposed to be, uh, uh, let's see, what was it? All dogs go to heaven is just like nothing. Never, never mind. I don't have a joke there. Mm, it's kind of like some like it hot or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> like these two like con guys or whatever. Or scam. Or like they meet a pretty girl and they're like. Trying to, like, hang out with her, and no. I mean, the dog doesn't have, like, a romantic interest, <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. He likes that Lonnie Anderson dog, right? I'm telling you, most of those puppies are his. <laughs> and since, he, since he's like a mutt, you know, he's a, he's a mixed breed, those puppies can come out looking like anything. <laughs> uh, I don't think you should feed your dogs pizza, by the way. I oh, mean, they'll no. probably be okay. Definitely not cake. Yeah. Cake bad. That cake stood out to me more than the other stuff in the room. Like, maybe they... Because it sparkles. Yeah. Because you were like, I want a slice of that cake. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) This is BS. Reach into the screen, give me that cake. How did they animate? Like, there's a lot of sparkle, like, in in parts of the movie, like in the night sky, or like... Mm-hmm. When the- oh, at the end, yeah, yeah. he's got that, that gigantic sparkles going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if that. I mean, that could have been like uh, early side computer effects being inputted, in, <laughs> because like they were they were doing computer input as early as the uh, the late '70s, really. Like, I don't know if you know, in Star Wars, they have like actual computer graphic footage in. The movie when they're talking about the the Death Star and the you know the weakness in the in the thing, like that actually is like a computer graphic and not just like an animation that they did. Hmm. So it wouldn't be out. I mean, this was eighty nine, so that wouldn't be out of the uh, out of question. I don't, I don't know what Don Bluth was doing though. Hmm. I really okay. So I I think the reason why I was another reason why I was like I'm not gonna like this movie is because. In my head, I mix up Ralph Bakshi and Don Bluth. Don Bluth, good animation. When he's not doing straight up humans. <laughs> like American Tale, great am- animation. Uh, Secret of Nim, great animation. Land Before Time, amazing animation. 
something super fun. Like, uh, did you have you ever played uh, Dragon's Lair? Mm-hmm. That game. That animation is so much fun, right? Like yeah. the bouncing around and dodging things and dragons and magic. I don't think the humans look bad though. Like you got a princess and you got what's her space. That's what I'm saying. Not in that. Yeah. But I think in Anastasia, which is another Don Bluth that we covered, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that the humans for the most part look too generic. And uh, then you got uh, I don't remember the name of that character, but the the big fat guy character is like, oh, he looks like a cartoon. That that guy I could see, but <laughs> like, oh, we need handsome. Uh, what's his name to to look like a handsome guy? Oh, John Keys. I think yeah, it was John, John Keys. Yes, it definitely was. I think that this art style is really impressive, but it's not my personal taste. Not my personal favorite. Um, what's your personal favorite? Um, I find these shapes a little bit more pointy mm-hmm. for my liking. Like, noses are pointy, like, um, and there's, like, snag, there's, like, teeth hanging out a lot. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. a fang or a buck teeth or a, yeah, that kind of a it's thing. It's got a slight, <laughs> a slight grotesque edge it's like, that it, you just don't see in a Disney movie. Yeah, right? it's, like, funkier than a Disney <laughs> movie usually is the characters are usually more, like, rounded and smoothed and, like, cutesy eyes in Disney movies. And and I'm not saying just Disney movies, but, like, you know, anime and stuff. Like, um... Yeah, anime is all about that clean line Miyazaki, stuff. yeah. I love Miyazaki, and I feel like that's, like, the opposite of, like, the more, like, snaggletoothy kind of, like, <laughs> thing. Oh. But I don't know. I mean, I, what about in a... The uh, spirited away, you know, you got that witch lady with a oh, huge, yeah. huge no, n- nose and mole and everything like that. You baba. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I prefer like Totoro to that. Right. Well, don't, <laughs> yeah, give, give me an adorable monster creature any day of the week. Yeah, I guess I I do. I find the art really impressive in this. But when I was a kid, it was like not the kind of art I usually liked. Like, I usually liked cats a lot more than dogs. And I usually liked kind of more cleaner, like, lines and shapes and stuff. But the colors were really awesome, and the shapes and the... You can tell there's, like, layers with the cells in some parts that are, like, this is the background cell, and this is, like the front animation coming over that background or whatever. And yeah. it looks really good. It looks three-dimensional in some places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like the sparkly effect and stuff. They could have done that with like water and glitter. I've seen... I think we were talking about that on one of the recordings that... Star Trek stuff. When I was a kid, I saw that they were showing you how they did the transporter and it was like they they took like water with like glitter in it and stirred it and they would use that with like another superimposed image to make like more like glittery looking stuff around or sparkly but yeah i just i love animated movies especially like not cg movies a lot so i have respect for this but yeah, it wasn't like a childhood standard in my house. I knew my sister Maureen liked it, but I didn't really watch it. What did you think of the animation? I really like it. I lo- like, especially looking at it now, I really like how they did the scenery. And I feel like that can be really difficult. But I don't know about... I I think the, the dog animation is okay. The people kind of look a little weirder than I remember, but, like, it's all right, I guess. <laughs> like, the expressions were kind of odd to see when <laughs> watching it again. But I really like the night sky, like, when you see New Orleans or when you're looking at it from really far away. It's pretty. Yeah, I I mean, like, the, yeah, trying, trying to put the human expressions on dogs... I think they did as about as good a job as you can. But uh, I, I noticed a lot of Anne Marie's character's head, like sometimes being too large for her body, and like depending on where she was standing, <laughs> like and there. And, and sometimes the animation looked 
like when we first see her and they're like, oh, here's that little monster everybody was talking about. Like it's it's like picture perfect there. And then uh, after Carface leaves and, and Charlie breaks into there. There's this moment where the animation looks like, uh, they, they didn't, I don't know if they were trying to focus on like her being in the shadow or something like that and then coming out, but it looks a little rough. And then when she comes out, it's like all done again, but I don't, I feel like there's an excuse for her character because I read that, uh, she, I mean, the, the actress that played her died a year and a half before the movie was released. And I, I read that. Don Bluth was like trying to make it look like the actress mm -hmm. in there in like her memory, which is, um, I mean, it's, it's really touching. Like uh, that's, it may, I mean, that just makes me have the, the feels for this movie. The character design for that girl, you can tell is different from the character design of the other people and the other like animals and stuff. I feel like she, could have been inspired by, well, now I know, could have been inspired by the girl, mm -hmm. but also inspired by other art of the time, like kind of a throwback to that era. I don't know. There's kind of like cutesy stuff, like Betty Boop and stuff like that from back <laughs> then. And like, I have a book that was written around the same time that's, um, has like kittens in it and the little boy and the little girl in it are kind of like soft, like, like nice clean images of kids with like a ribbon in their hair or whatever and um that's what children are supposed to look like it did remind me of snow white a little bit too and initially i was like since i'd never seen it all the way through i was like is this like a snow white and the seven dogs or something <laughs> like but no it's hmm. just it mainly just this trio <laughs> i have an idea for a movie i'll tell you about it <laughs> later I just remembered we also uh, watched We're Back a Dinosaur Story a thousand times, which is why I hate it. <laughs> Roll back the but, rock. <laughs> I mean, look at this. We watched this, and I, I enjoyed it. So what the hell is going to happen if I watch? I don't think that's going to happen. Ooh. I mean, there's nothing that's going to take <laughs> away Dr. Screw Eyes and Dr. Dr. What is it? What is it? Blue Eyes? New Eyes? New Eyes. Dr. New Eyes. Eat this yeah. cereal, dinosaurs. <laughs> It'll make you smarter. <laughs> Oh, it also has John Goodman in it, right? Yep. He's singing, he's singing <laughs> his life the away. Rock to the Hound of Time. <laughs> uh, Speaking of singing, tell him, what do you think of the music I, altogether? I like it. I, it was made by the same guy that made Bye Bye Birdie, or like uh, I think maybe helped with it, Bye Bye Birdie mm -hmm. and Annie. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not a big fan of like the music from both of those, but I really like the music here. <laughs> It's a little... It's different. He he changed it up. Maybe it's because it's the 80s, so make it a little... Oh, well, technically the 30s in the, yeah. in the actual movie. <laughs> yeah, he made it in the 30s, and it didn't get released till 89. <laughs> no. no, the movie takes place in the 30s. <laughs> what? The movie, 1939. <laughs> it's a period movie. Yeah. Like, you know how Cinderella came out in, like, the... 50s or something and it takes place like a long time before that it takes place in the 30s when it came out obviously that's uh, they just happened to live in a castle in a forest in the 30s and it's probably used as a speakeasy speaking of going back to that hmm. i like uh, the, the the music is like has a pretty big variety of styles not I mean, once it gets Caribbean, then then I then I get confused or a little cross-eyed. But <laughs> I mean, maybe that's supposed to represent like the different flavors available in, in New Orleans music or whatever. Burt Reynolds is definitely a baritone. There's no way he's a tenor. <laughs> like <laughs> listening to him sing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what about the part when he was like? Woo! Was that him, or did they, like, get a sound effect? <laughs> I, I don't think you could get Burn Reynolds to, to make that sound yeah. unless you had a vice on his you-know-what. That scene with the alligator or whatever kind of reminded me of... Have you seen Moana? Yeah. It kind of reminded me of the Jermaine Clement one with the crab. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because mm. I just saw that. <gasps> that was a weird scene, too. <laughs> it was, yeah. You're like, where am I? And why is this creature, like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I was kind of feeling, because I hadn't seen this before. But I think it's because I just saw Moana not that long ago. Mm. I haven't been watching my animated film, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. Crap. Yeah, that kind of comes out of nowhere in the story. Right? Like, So it's mm-hmm. a similar premise to right. this one. Jermaine Clement is a crab. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he sings a song about wanting to collect shiny things. Well, He's crabs kind of, like to collect shiny things. He's kind of like the aerial <laughs> of the... He's the oh, he's a he's singing collecting. crab, but he's collecting things. Okay. I was gonna yeah. say, he's, the, he's the main bird. He's <laughs> no, a crab. No, I didn't realize that <laughs> movie was about a crab lady. I'm trying to think of all. This. It starts off with you can't let a good dog down. Oh, or you can't keep, can't, keep, can't, keep, can't, can't keep a good dog. Yeah, it can't keep a good dog down. Yeah, ow, 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 ow. that was a, like an existing song, wasn't it? No, I don't think so. It was written for this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They talk about some very specific dog centric stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I f- I thought maybe they changed the words or That's something. That's true. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's an adaptation of a song. Yeah. And after that is um, uh, the Heaven song, right? Oh, oh, um, let me be yeah, surprised. Let me be surprised. I like that one a lot, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. Get stuck in your head, though. Mm-hmm. And then we go back to Earth. And <laughs> uh, what's mine is yours. No, is that before? I mean, that doesn't happen until after they they get all their money again. Like there's, but there is no song. There's that montage where it's like, <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, yeah. That's just a bunch of music <laughs> of them just like living it up, yeah. or whatever, <laughs> making, making that money. Don't it feel good? Right? <laughs> that building casino, and then, oh, she's so sad. And then they go get those dresses, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so lovely. They're walking, they're walking together, and they're holding bags. <laughs> yeah, in the way, like, in Pretty Woman, she, like, gets to buy some clothes, but it's like, it doesn't change everything. I was just happy that little girl was happy, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's cute that the little girl is happy. But, I mean, it wasn't like they were making any changes for her, really. <laughs> no. And she obviously, all that stuff got lost in a fire because she ends up back in her rags again. <laughs> oh, my God. And then the racetrack, which is another super delightful scene when they're pretty, when they're stacked on top of each other. And pretending to be, she's wearing the fake mustache. Oh, yeah. Now that, that's like a perfect example of Don Bluth movement, like er, the, everything's shifting. In a weird yeah. place. Like what, what's going on here? Like yeah, wow. that was funny though. Mm-hmm. I did laugh at that part when like the butt was wagging of the dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. like a person trying to walk, but with a dog's <laughs> wagging tail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a part where the dog was like reading her quote-unquote reading um, War War and Peace Peace to her, but telling her the story of Robin Hood. (laughs) And it kind of reminded me of, like, the Fox Robin Hood from the Disney Robin Hood. Mm. He even kind of looked like him a little bit in that scene to me. But I think that's another, like, Russian literature-like thing. Like, he always has these things like Anastasia and, (laughs) like, these, like... Like, immigrant stories from, like, yeah. I don't know if that was some kind of nod he was doing there with War and Peace, but he does have this, like, serious, like, dark (laughs) peasants-like thing in a lot of his stuff. Yep. And not to say kids wouldn't like it. Kids like all kinds of stuff. Like, I, I look back on things I liked as a kid, and I'm like, why in the world did I like that? And it's like... Because it was cool, like the, you know, it was artistic, and it was fun for me to watch, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next song is... What's mine? It is What's Mine is is Yours. yours. That's that's when they break out the the steel drum. (laughs) The steel pen. And uh, all those children singers that don't get any credit. Yeah, that was sad. There's like a chorus or something. 
Oh, it says it was only done by Burt Reynolds and Ken. Apparently, Ken Page was no <laughs> wait. That's a uh, that's like let's make music together. Yeah, just Burt ben- Burt Reynolds. Nobody else. Nope. He did all the children voices. Too. I thought they went to Jamaica for that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> get on the. Get they on got the, a choir. What you call it? The paddle boat. <laughs> right. The river boat. The river boat. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, let's talk about, um, who this movie's for. Who is this movie for? <laughs> like, I feel like there's a hyper-protective, <laughs> like, nature for parents and media for kids nowadays. I'm not sure if I, somebody be like, yeah, watch this movie where a dog gets killed and goes goes to the afterlife and then comes back. What's the rating for this movie? It's G, right? Yeah, it's rated G. <laughs> okay. That's mm-hmm. kind of crazy. <laughs> Doesn't have anybody specifically being murdered on camera. I don't know. Well, back then, that kind of meant, oh, anyone can see it. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we need, right? Mm. <laughs> I feel like the audience was intended for kids in the way that, like, when you watch old Bugs Bunny cartoons, there's tons of stuff that kids don't understand that's happening in the dialogue and stuff. But I also think that they were doing what they wanted. It seems, it feels to me that they were doing... They had an idea of what the story was going to be and how the characters were going to be in the songs. And it wasn't going to be, like, all daisies. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is obvious in it. So I guess it depends on who you are, but I think the intended audience was children. And I think <laughs> a lot of children actually ended up liking it. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, those those original Looney Tunes cartoons weren't made for kids either. They were just made for, to be played before whatever feature presentation was being at a movie theater, right? Mm-hmm. So adults were expecting to see cartoons that became like the expectations. So that makes sense. And like even when Disney made Snow White and Pinocchio and stuff like that, he was making feature animated films, but he still was like making films for everyone. It wasn't specifically aimed at children. And there's some scary, st- like as far as I'm concerned, there's some scary stuff in Snow White. You know, the the witch getting transformed and then dying horrifically on that hill because a bunch of dwarves stab her to death with a pickaxe. Is that what happened? I can't remember. No, the sc- the scar murder scene is really scary in Lion King. Mm-hmm. I kept it up in the kind future. Of. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think it was scary? I was when like he's about 13. to get killed? I was like 13 when that came out, but yeah, I oh. think some kids were scared when they saw that part. You know what's scary? At the end of We're Back, when <laughs> the, when he's all alone, um, what was his name? Dr. Screw Eyes, and all the crows come back and oh, eat yeah. him. <laughs> eat him to death or whatever. <laughs> all that's left is his screw eye. Oh, well. That's creepy. A crow takes it. <laughs> Uh, Fern Gully is kind of like an environmental movie, but it kind of reminds me of this, too, in a weird way. Really? (laughs) Yeah. With all the, like, odd characters and the, like, and the, like, slime creature or whatever. Like, I don't know. It's much more supposed to be, like, present day when it was made. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know. Did this come out the same weekend as The Little Mermaid? Because that one also came out in 1989. Mm, I'm wondering if that's... Probably not, but... Mm. That came out... Kiki's Delivery Service came out this year, too. Oh, I didn't know that. And, uh... Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. And The Burbs. Little Mermaid... Yeah, probably overshadowed yeah, it. Yeah, so. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Yeah, people went crazy for that. That was like the resurgence of uh, Disney animation after it, the slump it had been in. So everyone was like, oh, they can do stuff again? Let me go see that. Mm. They're doing a live action Little Mermaid? <laughs> That's not. I don't. Disney cut it out. Good luck. <laughs> everyone has a watch. That was something I wrote down. Really? Everyone has a clock. Does Anne-Marie? No, I'm just saying, like, 
that's kind of oh. an idea <laughs> that they present yeah. you with in oh. this. That, like, I don't know if I... In heaven? Like, like you have this clock that's going to stop eventually. And it's kind of an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Or a way of putting it in, like, a allegorical thing that's different from what you see in other stories. Yeah, they do a jailbreak in the beginning. I forgot about that scene. Mm-hmm. I kind of like I kind of like that like cold open don't know what's going on scene like the you know scrolling through or going through the streets and then like you hearing a voice in the distance and it turns out they're underground and then see they they do cool things in the animation there like you know he's literally got a, a flash bulb on his head that like when it's not on it's just like pitch black on the screen and that's cool. Yeah, I really like this opening. <laughs> I feel like that would that might have been a lot of improv improvisation, but I don't know. And then they try to kill the dogs with shotguns. Yeah, seriously, why didn't they give up once they got past the gate with the shooting? I don't know, these are very <laughs> important dog criminals. Dogs go to jail now. Yeah. I was like that. Alcatraz for dogs. The way it opened kind of reminded me of the way the rescuers opened or something. Like, that you're just like put into this world and you'd it's not like you're being told, this is a doggy movie, like, straight <laughs> off the, yeah. yeah it's, it's not a hand-holding thing, no. exactly, which makes it, kind of takes it away from, like, this is directly only for kids. Yeah, that's true. Like, because usually there is more hand-holding in a kid movie. They're mm-hmm. sort of trying to make it easier for you to understand, and I think in this one they might be trying to... I kind of had a feeling while I was watching it this time that they may have been trying to do, like, social change through education in it or something. And I don't know why I never thought of that before in some of his movies, but, yeah, maybe they were trying to, like, put something that was, like, good for people to learn or something in it. I don't know. <laughs> like, um... I mean, what's the lesson? I mean, no, we're, at, we're not at the lesson section, but what lesson would you actually have gleamed... <laughs> glommed from this like actually yes okay. yes what did you learn mia from the movie when you were a child i'm not sure <laughs> don't Some, something <laughs> about take advantage you. of people oh yeah that's good yeah 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 <laughs> you can always trust a grifter there we go that's a lesson that no uh you should be nice to orphans <laughs> because they might be able to talk to animals there's some heaven and hell stuff in this. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh. But I, I, for some reason, I was thinking about, like, the people and, like, the, like, poor versus the wealthy, like a class thing, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, definitely they want you to know there's consequences for him, which is different than it is in kids' movies sometimes. There are real-life consequences for the dog. Yeah, he was a bad yeah. person, so he's going out. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, he challenged he challenged the rule of heaven. But I just wrote down like mortality. <laughs> like the movie makes you think about that, not just because of like the heaven and hell and the afterlife stuff, but like it makes you think of that because unfortunately what happened to the little girl too. And it's kind of a big subject to deal with for kids. I don't know. I'm not saying that it should be danced around, but it's just interesting to see it so specifically laid out like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would, I would, let's talk about the hell sequence. Oh, right. The dream hell. Ooh. <laughs> Describe it, please. You know, I kind of... I should say that, like, this other thing reminds me of All Us Go to Heaven because it came later, but like looking at it, watching it now, it, it reminds me of how in the Book of Mormon when Elder Price goes to has like he has a dream where he's going to hell and there's all the uh, it, it's all red and there's Satan and he has the horns, so it's kind of similar to this. Direct inspiration. That's yeah. awesome. I haven't seen Book of Mormon. Oh. Matt and Trey Parker ripped off All Dogs Go to Heaven. Probably. <laughs> okay, so 
Charlie, because he basically (laughs) he escaped from heaven, heaven, or yeah, he ditched that and was like, no, I'm gonna go back to Earth and get my revenge. He does that, but he can't go back, which we hear a lot throughout the film. Like, you can never go back. Yeah, really <laughs> harping on that, aren't they? You, ha- you have to do it the way the voice does it, which is like, <laughs> if I was having a nightmare, I would hear that voice. Joel, you can never come back. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> like, wow, thank you. Anyways. So he has a dream <laughs> that he goes to hell and isn't he like he's on a boat, right? Mm-hmm. At one point and it's like a, it turns into a skeleton and then there's all these demons eating him and hot it, lava. Yeah, I remember as a kid I didn't like watching that scene. I would skip it. I was like this is getting too real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty stressful. <laughs> And then he wakes up and he's covered with puppies. I told you, puppies are evil. Oh yeah, that that made me relieved. I'm like, oh, he's not. It's a dream. Dead. It's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fine. I, these are still all my children. Oh no, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> but at the end, it looks like he's there again. Looks like he's in hell. Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes to hell. Yeah, yeah. the the devil's giving him one last chance to say goodbye or whatever. <laughs> oh. He's like, Charlie. Maybe he snuck out again or something. He's always sneaking out. <laughs> what do they have in hell? If in heaven they have clocks. <laughs> like, if someone goes to hell. Oh, to escape from hell? I oh, got, uh, let's see. Uh, or <laughs> something. A dog collar. Oh, something, yeah. something you can wear, I guess. That's a good idea. I'm not sure. Heaven seemed boring to me. <laughs> it's it was for, pretty, though. Yeah. It's it for was. chilling out. Yeah. I take a nap with those lions and those lambs. <laughs> Relax. There are no people there, so don't even worry. You know what's <laughs> funny? That's like in the beginning of All Dogs Go to Heaven 2, he has a song where like he's saying heaven's boring, and he's like, it's too heavenly here. And it's Charlie Sheen, I think. He's singing it, but I don't know. Mm. They get Charlie Sheen to voice Charlie. Funny. Makes sense. How come they couldn't get Burt Reynolds back? Was he must have been asking too I much money because they got Dom DeLuise. I didn't know that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He was like, nope. <laughs> My dad's name is Charlie, so whenever there's like somebody named Charlie in a movie, like I can't help but kind of think of my dad sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Willy Wonka in the Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I. <sighs> I don't know. I think that the the doggy characters are definitely way more like people. Like in, in 101 Dalmatians or something, they seem more like dogs. <laughs> Even though they have like people characteristics, they're much more dog motivated, you know? Like Right, they're not drinking and driving cars. Speaking of dog motivations, when they were in the gambling, mm-hmm. like I was like, what do dogs want? Like, food. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, they wouldn't get money, they'd get food. <laughs> like, they just want more food. So they're getting oh. more meat. But he does get money later. Yeah. But, yeah. I guess he, it's to fund the casino. <laughs> yeah, money. or whatever. To get some more meat. But I was, in that first casino, I was like, I guess the dogs just win food? That's funny to me. Cheap meat. Mm-hmm. How'd you guys feel about Charlie and Itchy's relationship, and I'm not talking about Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. I'm talking about Charlie being absolutely terrible to Itchy the whole time, basically. I feel like Itchy takes, like, a sub when it comes to Charlie. Because <laughs> like, even in the beginning, he's calling him boss. And yeah. Like, so. <laughs> I don't see why he's the boss. Charlie never wears any clothes. So, like, Itchy at least has the decency to put a shirt on. <laughs> Probably because he owned he owned the casino at one point, oh, and that's then true. like he's going on to own a different one. So. They're an organized crime, yeah. Mm. And he's one of the you know what do you call it the lieutenants or something. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and the guy the the car face totally did remind me of like Tony Soprano or something. 
<laughs> like just like a mob boss that was just like we gotta take care of this guy. Mm-hmm. And he was obese. No, that's not what you were saying. Anyways, so anything else you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I really like Charlie's relationship with Anne Marie. <laughs> I just thought it was really cute. I like it eventually. <laughs> it's just kind of like, I'm going to put up with this kid because she's going to make me money. Yeah, but not at the end. No, he saves the, her. Yes, at the end. Mm-hmm. He suddenly has a heart of gold. <laughs> Probably that near death experience with the, the alligator and where she potentially has pneumonia. I think before he might have felt something for her. <laughs> it's hard to tell now, <laughs> watching it again, because I'm like, he's kind of, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> he's kind of doing mean things. <laughs> he seems to care more about the money than about whether or not the little girl is happy for some of the time. But I think he does like her. I think that he's pretending that it's like all just business to the other dog or whatever, mm-hmm. but. I think that he really does like her. I think he's also... He's he's had this past life of crime that he's used to. And then he has a character change, so... Always hustling. Yeah, he's kind of hustling. That reminds me... There's that part at the... Towards the end after she... The alligator encounter, we'll call it. Where she's like upstairs and the other dog's like, Oh, she might have pneumonia. I don't know if she, she's really sick. And Itchy like shows up after having the crap beaten out of him. It's, it, it so reminds me of a specific movie. And now I, I can't place it where it's like, This dame got in the way. She wasn't part of the plan. You yeah. know? And now it's like, you're pushing me aside. And it's all about whatever she wants. And, you know, the, the guy's got to be like, She doesn't mean anything to me. It's never been about that. It's always been <laughs> about the game. It Aww. is. It's you always know, been about the mystery method. There's movies like that. There are. Like, I can't name a specific scene either, but it did <laughs> remind me of something else I'd seen in a movie before. Like an old-timey movie. Mm-hmm. It did, and I don't think I've seen... I don't know. Maybe I'm just reminded of this scene. I do like that scene, though, a lot. <laughs> you like to see... Anne Marie break down in tears and run away. No, I like it when. That's <laughs> just you know, it's upsetting to me personally. Uh, I mean, before that, when it comes to the to the realization, like maybe Charlie actually does care for Anne Marie, and like he's pushing other priorities aside for her. Yeah, he let that whole casino burn down just so he could save her from her delicious waffle breakfast, <laughs> the gooeyest of waffles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we were talking about in the movies. See, when she she finds those parents, she zeroes in. We're gonna these guys are gonna adopt me. That's the true grift right there. I think after Charlie died, she like wrote in a diary like got these suckers to adopt me. <laughs> I knew it would work. That was a funny joke he made when they find out that she doesn't really have any place to go and she lives in the junkyard and they <laughs> they step aside. And they're like. like- <laughs> I told you I didn't want kids. <laughs> Maybe I call the police and get this kid picked up. I feel like she's going to try to hang around. You shouldn't have let her inside. <laughs> Did you notice how bad she smells? <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. I... I uh... You definitely get a vibe in their house that things are much, much better than they are mm, everywhere else yeah, in the story. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, just don't leave here. This is where you want to stay. Mm-hmm. These are rich out-of-town people. They don't even have, you know, a New Orleans accent. So who knows what their story is? Maybe they're a pair of grifters. <laughs> <laughs> we need... Hey. Yeah, that's what they do. They step aside and they're like, we need a kid for our scam. <laughs> oh my god! <gosh. laughs> this, this might be exactly what we were looking for. It starts all over. <laughs> she can have as many damn waffles as she wants. <laughs> I thought maybe they could have a prequel of them when they were younger with dogs that they used to hang out with or something. <laughs> <laughs> we can all talk to animals. Don't tell the little girl. <laughs> okay, so who who do you recommend watch this? I mean, do you recommend parents show this to your kids? I would show it to my kids. 
Yeah. And you have three children. Have you shown <laughs> them this uh, this movie? They're my brothers. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um... Have you shown uh, Dallas this movie? No, this is like way before their time. <laughs> but I guess they, I feel like they wouldn't really be into it because they're kind of, it sounds sad, but like they're kind of past this already. <laughs> Joaquin is like what two? Yeah, but he's he's a mean baby. <laughs> he yeah. is. Yeah, he's kind of a brat. Yeah, he only likes to watch the Jersey Shore. <laughs> what does he like? He likes cars. He likes um, what else? Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Oh yeah, that's that's for the bad children. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> no. I mean. Yeah. Daniel Tiger, put down that knife! No, I just mean, like, I don't know if he'd like it. <laughs> I mean, what did I try to show him? I tried to show him one movie, and he didn't like Oh, it was it was Frozen. I think I, I tried to show him Frozen, and he didn't like it. So. Oh, really? So, I don't know if he'd like this one. Hmm. <laughs> I thought Frozen was, like, the kid equivalent of catnip. Yes, not. All kids love Frozen. I haven't seen that one yet. Did you watch Labyrinth when you were a kid? Not when I was a kid. I watched it later on, though. Did you like it? Some parts were kind of, like, I was wondering why David Bowie wanted to get with 13-year-old Jennifer Conley. Conley? I I feel like <laughs> this, for me, like, All Dogs Go to Heaven was, like, something I wouldn't have been into, but Labyrinth was something I was super into as a yeah. kid. And I was thinking, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I have been so into that as a kid? But I really liked it. Mm -hmm. And they have some pretty awesome music in that and stuff. But I tried to show it to my nephew, and he was like, <laughs> no. He doesn't even seem to like live action at all right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe. He was into The Wizard of Oz that time we were watching it with him. I think you just watched it with him that time. He was into it. Mm, maybe maybe it's because it he thought I was into it. You know? Yeah, well, you <laughs> definitely are cool, and he thinks everything you think is cool. All is right. Cool. I Next did like Labyrinth, though. Yeah. That was good. Next time he's here, we're watching The Hudsucker Proxy. Kid will love it. Uh, that's a serious movie. Says you. There's comedy in it, but it's a pretty serious movie. Children love hula hoops. And Coen Brothers movies. Was David Bowie trying to get with her? I forget. Yeah, he is. No, he just wanted to kidnap that child. It's completely different. But at the end, he asked her to stay with him or something. That's because he thinks of her as another toy. He says that he wants her to fear him and love him, and then he will be her slave. Yeah, and it's space. pretty weird. He's like, treat him like a god. <laughs> but he has that, like, serenade, like, ballroom song with her, too, earlier in the movie where... I feel like that was, like, directly trying to appeal to her fantasy, like, being a princess and, like, you know, doing that, whatever. She is, like, a little bit older, I think, but I don't <laughs> yeah. know if it's 15 or 16, but... She's still in high school, for sure, mm -hmm. and she's just watching the baby, but it is kind of a weird dynamic <laughs> for her to be in with him. The movie this week is Lap... What, what <laughs> did that movie? <laughs> we did a two-parter on that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we like Lap. What about you? Who, who do you show this movie to? Who would I show this movie to? Yes. I don't know. Dolan might like it, but I I might not want to show it to him because I don't want to watch it over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> would he like it? Maybe. <laughs> I feel like his dad would like it and his dad would show it to him. <clears throat> his dad was really into, like, Nightmare Before Christmas and a bunch of other, like, more... Not, not Disney animated movies, but other ones. He so, likes gambling dogs. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maureen liked it mm -hmm. and That's his mom So maybe she'll show it to him I don't know Yeah, maybe I'm not showing this to anyone No one can ever know <laughs> about this movie Podcast over <laughs> No, uh, but seriously Who who would I mean, like I, I feel like it is a novelty That if you haven't seen it in a long time You might actually get a kick out of watching it with a kid Not Not a super young kid Somebody... I don't know, I'm thinking like 
second or third grade, that kind of stuff like that. I think the music is fun. But as a, a grown-up, I think it's more fun to think about, like, Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise goofing off. I mean, I kind of wish I had liked it more as a kid, because knowing Burt Reynolds as an adult, and, like, through all the other things I've seen him in, it kind of was distracting for me to be like, oh, this is Burt Reynolds. <laughs> like, but I think he did do a good job. He did. Like, and it makes me wonder if he'd done other voice acting and stuff, what that would have been like, too. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he has this, like, persona from, like, the way he looks and stuff that you associate with, like, your other, like, reference points of him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But this definitely, it was cool to, like, just hear his voice doing the acting in it. So that was all Dogs Go to Heaven. Let's uh, wrap this up. I'm going to read the outro stuff. You guys think of a lesson that you learned. A a fake lesson this time, not one of those real (laughs) lessons that we were talking about. Although I'm not sure we actually established, like, uh, you have to do good things if you want to go to heaven because you're not a dog. Is that that the real (laughs) lesson of this movie? Probably. (laughs) Assuming you believe in God. (laughs) I mean, they definitely believe in God in this movie. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Anne Marie's praying to God. <laughs> they go to heaven. I thought she was going to save him by praying after he died the second time. Mm-hmm. I honestly thought that's what was going to happen. It was like we were going to see him in hell and she was going to, like, pray again and that he was going to, like, float up with a halo or something. <laughs> I was glad he got to say goodbye to her instead. Yeah, that almost made me cry. I don't like that at all. But once again, it was more because I was thinking about that poor actress. Aww. Anyway, let's get <laughs> let's get this <laughs> off. Uh, hey, listener, if you got any suggestions or comments, write into please don't podcast at gmail.com or message us on Facebook at Facebook Facebook.com slash PDSMIOS. If you listen to us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, we'd appreciate it if you left us a star and or written rating. Thank you in advance. If you got a few bucks, you can send it to us through uh, Ko-Fi. That's ko-fi.com slash PDSMIOS. And uh, if you like our podcast, check out the other podcasts that are available at eartrumpetaudio.com. That is our network. And we share it with a whole bunch of really good podcasts. All right. Short and sweet. Do you have a lesson that you learned, Mia? Dogs are able to fight with their with their arms and punch throw punches. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> it's an important lesson, I guess. <laughs> Dogs. Are... That's true. Yeah, I want to see a dog actually do that in real life, though. Now, what? A dangerous lesson. Dogs know how to take the parking brake off, and they can <laughs> roll a car right over somebody. So, you know, be really careful. Lock your cars. <laughs> mm-hmm. they, they know how to drive a stick. That's yeah. Another one. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> I think you ever get to actually drive that car. That's why he was pretending to drive it with the, the video screen and the, the fan blowing in his face. Poor pup. Yeah, yeah, to go along with the theme here. If all dogs go to heaven, that means they can get away with anything. So the lesson is don't ever trust a dog because they could, they could be a murderer and doesn't, they don't know. They don't care. They know they got a one-way ticket to the pearly gates. Man, this is an upsetting movie, Mia. (laughs) Thanks for being on. It's a good movie though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for guesting and bringing this one. No problemo. Next time we'll have to do something Japanese. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you like a Japanese movie? Oh, you were saying Kiki's Delivery Service. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Mm-hmm. Stay like in 1989. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.
EarTrumpetAudio.com. Ideas and entertainment. Loud and clear. Hehehehe. <laughs>